two graphs f of x and g of x are given in this diagram. f of x is the quadratic function x squared plus 6x plus 14 and g of x is a straight line given by ax plus b. We are told that b is the mirror image of p in the axis of symmetry of f and we want to determine the coordinates of a so to get point a we just need to know something about the turning point of a quadratic function remember at the turning point x is given by negative b over 2a and in our equation b is equal to 6 and a is equal to 1 so if we substitute into that we should get x equal to negative 3 and now we need to find the y coordinate so substitute negative 3 into the function and that should give us y is equal to 5 therefore the coordinates of point A are negative 3 and 5 in this question we want to look for the equation of the axis of symmetry we did that earlier on already we said at a the turning point is minus 3 5 therefore the equation of the axis of symmetry should be x is equal to negative 3 determine the coordinates of point b there is point b and we want to know the coordinates of b this is where we need to remember that point b is a reflection of point p along the axis of symmetry now we know the axis of symmetry is given by x is equal to negative 3 so this dotted line is x is equal to negative 3 uh, you will notice p is on the y-axis so P is the x-coordinate as 0 if you work out y you just need to sub in 0 into that equation there you should get y is equal to 4 sorry to 14 so the coordinates of P are 0 14 but P is then reflected along the line x is equal to negative 3 so, so that we get point B and so using symmetry B will be equal to or will be the point negative 6 and 14 show that the value of A is equal to negative 3 and the value of B is equal to negative 4 uh, one way you can do this is to work out the equation of the line AB or the line BATQ. First of all, we need the gradient. Uh, remember, we know point A, or well, that line passes through point A. We said point A is negative 3 and, and 5. Then we just worked out point B. We said point B is negative 6. And 14. First of all, the gradient. The gradient will be 14 minus 5 divided by negative 6 subtract negative 3. And that should give us an answer of negative 3. That equation there is given as y equals ax plus b. This tells us that a is equal to negative 3. If we sub in here, we should get a value of C and C will be equal to negative 4. But C is the value of B that we are looking for. So this means B is equal to negative 4. Calculate the length of PQ. We know the coordinates of P already. We said earlier on the coordinates of P will be 0 and 14.
now we need the coordinates of point Q. Q is here. You will notice that point Q is on the line that we just found. That line GX is given by the equation negative 3x minus 4. Let's write it as y is equal to negative 3x minus 4. But this line passes through point Q. We now know that at point Q, the value of x is the same as the value of x at p, because this is the y-axis. So we know that at Q, x is equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, we can substitute now into that equation and we should get y is equal to negative 4. So now we know p is 0, 14, and we know q is 0, negative 4. We can therefore work out the distance pq. pq will be the distance 14 subtract negative 4 which is equal to 18. Calculate the length of OE given that CD is equal to 28. Let's make use of that. CD is equal to 28. C is given there and D. So that whole distance there is 28. And we are looking for the length OE. Now OE is that horizontal distance between the origin O and E, that distance there. So all we really need is to know the values of X at O and at E. We know obviously at O, X is equal to zero. All we need is the value of X at E. But the distance CD is equal to 28, tells us that when we subtract from f of x, the line g of x, we should get 28. Uh, f of x means the same thing as the y value at c. So this is the y value at c. And this one here is the y value at d. All we need to get the 28 is to subtract the y value at d from the y value at c. But at c, we are talking about function of x. And at d, we are talking about another function of x, which is g of x. So we just need to solve this equation here and find x. Now f of x is given as x squared plus 6x minus, sorry, plus 14. If we subtract g of x, which we know now g of x is negative 3x minus 4, that should give us 28. Now solve that, you get x is equal to 1, or x is equal to negative 10. But at d, we know that x should be greater than 0 because it is on the right side of the origin. So x cannot be equal to 10. Indeed, x should be equal to 1 at that point d there. So now we know that at e, x is equal to 1. But o is the origin, which tells us, therefore, that the distance oe should be equal to 1 unit. Now, for which values of x? Is the function of f, the function f, smaller than the function g? f of x smaller than g means f of x is below the graph of g. So you just look at your, your graph and you check where f of x is below g. You will notice from b there, after b there, our f of x up to point a there. This is the only place where f of x 
is smaller than or is below the graph of g. Therefore, x must be greater than negative 6, but smaller than negative 3. For which values of x is f of x times g of x greater than 0? This means when we multiply f by g, we should get a positive result. Remember, we are multiplying two numbers to get a positive. So the numbers should both be positive or both negative. But if you look at the graph, the graph of f is always positive. And that means we don't have to worry about that. So let's look at the graph and find where the, the graphs are both positive. Like f is positive everywhere, but do you see that g is only positive up to that point t there? Beyond point t, if you move to the right, the graph of g then is negative. So all this part will be negative here. So we are only interested in the parts of g that is positive. Clearly, we need to know what point t is. So let's work out the coordinates of t. t is on the x-axis, which means we know that at t, y should be equal to 0. But t is also on the line g of x is equal to ax plus b. Remember, g of x, we now know, is actually y equals negative 3x minus 4. So that point t lies here. We now need to put y equal to 0 in order to get x. If you solve this for x, we should get minus 4 thirds. We can now answer that question. f of x multiplied by g of x will be positive when x is smaller than negative 4 thirds.